we are here today with Dr. Austin Gurley, and uh, Dr. Gurley is going to talk a little bit about um, the new lap time or plus features. Um, so not only what they are, but explain a little bit of the substance behind what is predictive lap timing, how is it calculated. This is something that in the industry in general, I'm, I'm sure you agree with me, but not many people, um, companies that produce this type of technology, talk about what it actually is. Yeah, definitely. So there's going to be very little references on this, exactly how you get that number to show up on your display of what is my delta time or what is my predicted lap time. So we're going to actually show you, show you guys that today. Yeah, exactly. And we all know anytime you're trying to drive faster, it's always good to know why you're trying to do what you're trying to do and what the references for the tools you're using uh, underline, like fundamentally, what are they? Yeah. All right. All right, so I'm going to run through this uh, and present it using the data review in Apex Pro app. But what we're really talking about is the predictive timer that you see a number show up while you're on the racetrack. So you want to explain a little bit as a driver how you're using that before I dive directly into how it, yeah. how it gets on the screen. Yeah, absolutely. So connect, calibrate, drive, right? Connect to your unit. You'll have the track selected. Then turn your, uh, your device, your phone or your iPad. Uh, any iOS 13 plus device into landscape mode. And then you can either select from predicted time, which will be displaying the predicted lap time uh, or your predicted Delta, which is the difference between your running lap and your predicted time. Um, so as a driver on track, that's important information, especially in a competitive session, like a time attack session or qualifying for a race, or you can see in real time as you exit a corner um, or, uh, you know, in different parts of the racetrack, how far am I off of the time I'm trying to achieve? Perfect. All right, so if everybody wants to follow along with this, you can, because I'm gonna do this demo with the session that comes as the example when you download the app for the first time at Barber Motorsports Park. It's this one here. Uh, should be 13 clean laps of Barber. Um, so the first thing to know, let me line this up a bit, pick time on the map. And then on this lower line graph, I'm going to have time plotted against distance. So X axis is distance, Y axis time, and then the color will disappear in a second uh, when we start to compare laps. So if you are in the car and using the predictive timer, the, when you get on track, the first out lap is not going to show you anything. It's going to sit at zero for the entire out lap. And in fact, it's gonna sit at zero for the first clean lap too. So, so after you've been on the track, it's gonna feel like two laps, but after the first, first complete lap where you cross the starting line and you crossed it again, that's when it's able to start calculating and predicting your time and your delta time. So in this case, when you're in the car, the out lap, which it appears that the driver is sat <clears throat> sat in the paddock for a while, pulled onto the track, you're going to see nothing here, and you're going to see nothing for that first complete lap, and then the predictive timer is going to start. That makes sense? Yep. Okay, great. So, moving from there, every time you complete a lap, Apex Pro has kept up with a few different metrics about the lap that you completed. And so all the predictive timing is going to be comparing the current lap that you're on to things that we've learned about the laps you've done so far. So in this case, uh, the terminology we usually use on our data review is we have the selected lap, which is gonna have a blue check mark and be plotted in blue, and the reference lap, which is gonna be plotted, selected in red and plotted in red. So as you're going along, every time you complete a new lap, the Apex Pro is gonna evaluate what your reference should be. And it's always gonna use your best lap in the session as the reference. So it's going to be the first lap you've completed because that's the only lap, so the best lap so far. And then after that, every time you cross the start finish line, the reference is going to become your best lap at that point. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So uh, for explaining how the timer itself works, I'm not quite going to follow that. I'm going to pick a couple of different laps um, that just make a better demonstration, but always know that the reference is compared to your best lap in this session so far. Great. <clears throat> so to start out, I'm going to make lap number nine our current lap and lap number one our reference. And I did that, if people haven't seen this, you can make a reference lap by, by pressing and holding on any lap and it will put a red check mark next to it. 
you can press and hold on it again to deselect it and get back to the colored rainbow road overlay. So just looking at these two, um, because I looked at this a little earlier and this, this is for a nice demonstration. And then again, we have on the map, we're plotting time just as a convenience and on the line chart, we're plotting time versus distance. And this is the kind of heart of how the predictive timer works is we're looking at any point on the wherever you are, we want to compare what your time is on this lap at that location on the track with your time at that location on your best lap so far. So, so you know, several things I'm saying there. So we'll kind of look in detail at a few places on the map. So I'm going to move our little markers forward a bit. So coming down the hill here, let's see. So can you see, can you highlight this? Right there. Yeah, right there. Okay, cool. So um, we recently added a few markers on the um on the chart here actually i'm going to move further along so i get a bigger number let's go there all right so we've got, we got a few markers on the screen so you can see how on the map overlay you can see your time and since we're plotting where you are on the track <clears throat> against your time these times are almost identical uh they should be within a hundredth of a second the same because again we're looking at two cars the same time since the starting line right. where are they on the track and you can see that our blue car from lap nine is is in the lead if they were two yep. cars on track right he's in the lead and you can see that it's it's hard to see but you can see in the lower chart it's presented a little bit differently so when you plot on a line chart against a distance the two laps are going to be synchronized to the distance that you've traveled which yep. is a lot like what we're about to get into about how the predictive timer works is you're saying at a particular distance from the starting line, what is the metric that I care about? Yep. Does that make sense? That so makes sense. in this case, what we have plotted is my lap time at a particular location during the lap. So for these two laps, lap nine and one, it looks like on lap number one, we got to 2,443 meters at the time 64.23 seconds on lap nine and at the time 65.83 seconds on lap one so that's you know and, and maybe an easier way to see that is if you look where the cars are on the map clearly the blue car has gone further right in the same amount of time you've gone further but if you looked at the distance the plots aren't quite the same if you look at the distance that means that that car has gone further in the same amount of time or at this distance I've gotten there in less time. Less time. And it's and that's the reason having a predictive timer is not a trivial manner because it's a flip between time marches forward smoothly, but because your speed is changing as you go across the track, it is rather hard to keep up with how far you've actually traveled. Right. But that's the heart of the predictive timing is saying at this location, compare my time to something else. Yeah. Kind of a, a backwards idea. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's not sense. exactly something straightforward to understand. Yeah. Would you say that it's important when people are reviewing laps like this to keep everything kind of succinct and, and easy to understand that the faster lap is usually selected as the blue check mark? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Um, okay. well, however you want to think of it. Personally, sometimes I think red for reference is a nice way. So maybe maybe red for reference or blue as the reference. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't matter. It's up to you. Right. Um, just have to make sure you just have to which know one which one we're talking about. Right. Yeah. And so in this case, lap nine is the fastest lap that we've done, that we've performed on this track. So it is going to be the reference. So if we had a Delta timer, um, after lap nine, it would know that that was our best time and it would be using that as the reference. So that's exactly, yep. that's exactly right. Um, and I only picked these two laps because lap one was slower, uh, and it makes this next thing we're going to look at a little more obvious. So, uh, part of I'm going to flip the, line chart to the gain loss channel and a lot of people have seen the gain loss channel we've had that for several months actually before the lap timer plus but it's, it's very closely related to the predictive timing the difference is that the gain loss channel is it uses the entire session that you've recorded and it goes back and is able to calculate your time distance your pardon your time difference at any place on the track based on the complete lap but while we have the predictive timer in the car, you haven't completed the lap yet. So it's a slightly different calculation. Yep. 
But in the end, the predictive delta and this gain loss channel were very similar. So if I go back and look at, at this point, I have <clears throat> at, this, at this location, the blue car got here in 64.2 seconds and the red car got here in 65.8 seconds. So that's about a 1.6 second difference at that right. point. And if we go and look at the gain loss channel, we should see that exact difference. If you can highlight the number that came out, yeah, that location and that number, um, you can see that that's exactly the gain or loss between the two cars at that location. Yep. This is exactly what you're getting, but in real time on the predictive timer. So at that location, what was the time on my best lap? What is my time now? And there's a difference between the two. And that would be your predictive delta. If we want to extrapolate that to give you a predicted lap time, it's, it's very similar. We take that number and simply add it to your best lap time so far, which will tell you by the time you get to the end of the track, if you run the rest of the lap as good as your best time, what do we think your lap time will be? Right. But the heart of it, it really starts with calculating this delta between the two, and then you can present it however you Right. And it's really very simple when you think about it. It's called predicted lap. So we're basically using what we already know to predict a lap time. So in this case, we know how far <clears> you've traveled or how much time that's taken you to travel versus the best lap that you've done so far. That's right. And in this case, we know that you are 1.6 seconds slower on this. So your eventual predicted time is probably 1.6 seconds slower than the best lap so far. All right. So that'll make sense. And this, um, this, Set of laps that we picked are more obvious, so I'm going to switch to using, let's say now that the reference um, is nine, and the lap we're looking at, uh, we can we can do ten. So let's do this. So now the the red is the reference, and blue is our current lap. Which this is this is exactly what the predictive timer would have done. It would have seen right. that your best lap so far is lap nine, and then on 10, 11, 12, 13, is going to keep using lap nine as the reference as because the that's reference. your best. Right. Exactly. And so you can see here, if we look at the time, um, we can say again at the same point, the difference between the times is about 0.54 or so. And if we look at the gain loss channel, you know, 0.54, it's negative um, because of the way we're showing that the, <clears throat> the, lap number or the red lap you're, you're ahead of the blue lap so that sign um will get confusing if you go back and forth on which lap you look at in the data review right. but if you're on the track negative is always good on the predictive delta and lower lap times are always good of course on your predicted lap exactly. time. yeah so when you're going faster than your best lap and your predicted lap is faster than the best lap in the session you see a negative sign that represents you know you are if we're looking at delta right? You yes. are this much faster, right? Meaning less lap time, right? It's like golf, lower scores better, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you're going for. Whereas predicted time will show you the actual lap time. Exactly. Um, so it's fair to say, I guess, if you have two laps overlaid and this game loss channel is trending downward like this, mm -hmm. the predictive display would be slower, right? You would see the red block over yeah. your lap time. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. And, and so on this one, we just color coded red. So, you know, this is, worse but again yeah. you have to be careful on which one you meant as reference and which one you meant as the lap you're in you know your selection so it's really best if you just compare it to the map picture where you can see which car is in the lead and exactly. it's very obvious which which one is which yeah yeah that's great advice yeah i think that makes a lot of sense so we learned some stuff about predictive i think a lot of people probably assume that predictive is working off of some different you know sectors on the racetrack or it's it's doing a lot more or a lot less than what they might have learned here right it's it's complicated at the same time yeah for sure and there are there are different ways to calculate this so um some people do it where instead of counting the distance you traveled from the starting line they'll start the distance counter over each time you cross into a new sector um that requires that the that the devices creating this in real time knows the sectors already right um it's it's in our testing less accurate if you're automatically trying to generate the sectors it's less accurate than if you do it our way mostly because we have um, some pretty good math behind how we calculate the distance which is yeah which is a bit better than uh, most data systems which would just add up the distance between gps points which is which is lossy 
um, all the noise adds up to creating an error in our system yeah. that's just more refined than that. And then some people uh, claim to have a GPS location-based disk tracker, and they won't tell you how they do that, so that would be V-Box. Um, yeah. Claims to have a different technique. Uh, we play with that. We haven't seen any improvements in, over over this technique. It's it's pretty clear what it's doing, but because our distance measurement is accurate, I think our predicted times are accurate as well. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've used lap timer plus on the racetrack already, and I can say that to me in, in the car, you're not looking for a, a finite amount of resolution where it's not important for you to know am I a thousandth of a second faster mm -hmm. or slower. You basically want to know are you trending upwards or down? Are you trending faster or are you trending mm -hmm. slower? Exactly. Right? And it needs to be obvious the value is, is less important than the fact that you know I just did something that created uh, a faster lap time potentially mm -hmm. or a slower lap time. And that's really all we need to know when and, we're in the car. And it's something you can use in tandem with the apex lights. As you get up to the corner that you're worried about, check your predictive time, start paying attention to the apex predictive um, performance meter as you go through the corner and then check whether it worked in, in seconds or not by looking at the predicted timing at the end of the, yeah. at the, end of the sector. Absolutely, you know, at the end of the day, it's going faster is all hinges around technique improvement. Mm -hmm. um, the lap timer features are obviously showing you whether you're faster or not, but they don't give you any indication as to your technique, which the Apex display, the Apex score, uh, and all the metrics that we promote and talk about in data review does. Mm -hmm. um, so this is definitely oriented towards those of you that are searching for some lap time, or if you're just curious to know, a lot of people say I'm a driver based on feel, right? I just do it because I feel it. You're not really going to feel whether or not it's a faster lap time. You're going to feel what the G's and the speed do to impact the way that you feel when you're pushed up against the seat, right? You really need, you know, lap timer plus and the apex lights to be kind of verify what you may or may not be. Awesome. Great. I think that's everything I want to get across. I appreciate you joining us. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, guys, we'll be uh, check out uh, lap timer plus. It is available as an app upgrade uh, in the app, so make sure you go and subscribe again. It's four ninety nine a month or forty nine dollars for the year. Uh, we definitely recommend if you think you're gonna want to use this a lot, which you all will, I guarantee it. It's uh, it's very helpful. Forty nine dollars for the year. Get yourself a little discount, and uh, we'll see you at the racetrack. All right. Cool.